Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, we have spent some time explaining Euler's formula for um, trigonometric representation of the complex exponent just by itself this formula looks quite amazing well at least for me at the same time um, let's not forget that this represents a polar representation uh, of complex numbers and the polar representation is very convenient in the way that you can have something like this. So raising um, a complex number into a certain power actually is equivalent to rotation you are increasing uh, the face, the argument of the complex number in polar uh, representation uh, by this factor which is actually equal to the power you are raising the complex number to. So we were talking about this formula um, uh, basically we have proved it for uh, n equals to 2 uh, you, you just open parentheses and everything seems to be very obvious uh, for any n it can be proven by induction also um, uh, basically uh, using the trigonometric formula for the sum of two angles now what's interesting is that this combination of trigonometry and exponent uh, which represents basically the complex numbers um, allows us to um, solve certain problems in certain unusual way I would say so the problem which I would like to present today is the following you have to summarize this series and this one same thing for sine That's true. Now, there are certain non-related to um, exponential um, representation um, methods to solve this problem. And I will address them later on. Because they actually require certain lucky guess, if you wish, and unless you know this particular trick, you will not be able to come up with it. However, if you know the complex numbers and their representation um, in this form using the um, Euler's formula, you can actually use this type of relationship to, um, to calculate these two series. And, and here is how. Let's just consider that you would like to um, represent the following number pi uh, uh, pn plus irn. What is this? Well, that's cosine x plus i sine x plus cosine x, uh, 2x plus i sine 2x plus etc plus the last member cosine nx plus i sine nx right so this is multiplied by i added to this one and i will group together the corresponding members which have the same uh, argument uh, for trigonometric functions so x with x, 2x with 2x, etc. Now, look at this formula. It, ab it obviously means that instead of doing this, 
you can write it in a way this is e to the power of i x this is e to the power of i well let's call it 2 i x plus etc and the last member is e to the power n i x now why is it better for a very obvious reason this is a geometric progression right since e to the power of k i x is actually e to the power of i x to the k's degree remember this is the property of any um, exponential function so I can write it in the way that pn plus irn equals e to the power of ix plus e to the power of ix squared plus etc plus e to the power of ix to the nth degree now it's obvious that this is a geometric progression right now we know how to sum the geometric progression right so we will sum it up we will uh, replace e to the power of ix in that final formula with cosine x plus i sine, I sine x and basically bring it into some technically um, acceptable uh, form so that's basically the whole idea and uh, to tell you the truth i would love to finish this on this particular note i don't want to go through the calculations summing the uh, geometric progression i mean we all know how how to do it but what, what's the most important oops sorry what's the most important um in in this case the most important is organize two uh series which we have into this particular way to use the property of um exponents of the complex argument thereby reducing it to something no it's basically like um, here is a comparison well, philosophical comparison uh, if you have um, two points a and b and you know the road from a to b and it's maybe long it's tedious etc but you know the road there is basically no doubts that you can actually go from a to b now, but if you don't know the road from A to B, even if they are very close together, but you don't know the road, well, that's actually very difficult to get from A to B, right? So, you have certain um, known, technically, um, already went through procedure, like summarizing the geometric progression, converting... Um, uh, complex exponent in, in, in trigonometric format etc so you know all this stuff what is the most important idea to use this thing this is an inspiration which really should come to you because everything else is just technicality now on my website on unizor.com where this lecture is represented it also has um, all the um, required uh, calculations for summing the geometric progression converting uh, back to a trigonometric formula and finally after certain manipulations I've got the, the final result and, and here is the final result let me just write it for you I don't want to go through this right now you can go to my website and find out what it is the final result for this is pn, which is the sum of cosines, is equal to sine 2n plus 1 over 2x minus sine x over 2 divided by 2 sine x over 2. And rn is equal to, well, let's wait for rn. We'll talk about this later on. Now, once I have basically discovered this formula, 
um, using whatever the techniques we have, summing the geometric progression, converting into trigonometric form, etc. Now, what seems to me is interesting is that just looking at this formula, I can come up with certain, well, a trick, if you wish. Let's just think about it. So, if this sum is equal to this, then if I will multiply this sum by 2 sine of x over 2, I might actually get, well, some simplification using some trigonometry to come up with the difference. And that would prove from completely different uh, aspect um, this formula. So let's try to do it. So what I will do is I will multiply this by the sine, by the sine of x and I will use the formula um, of um, sine a times cosine b well let's use Greek letters since we are talking about angles sine of alpha cosine of beta now what is it equal let's just think about it uh, sine of alpha plus beta is sine cosine plus cosine sine right so um, we would like to reduce uh, so let me just again sine alpha plus beta equals sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta right and we want to get rid of this if I have minus here I will have minus here right so if I will summarize them plus sine of alpha minus beta I will get plus and minus so this would reduce and the only thing is I have double this so I have to put this right so that's the formula I will use this formula and I will multiply this sum pn by 2 sine of x over 2. So alpha is x over 2 and beta is x, 2x, etc. and x. Now what happens in this case? Let's just think about it. Let's temporarily wipe out this. We don't really need this. So pn times 2 sine x over 2 equals 2. So 2 sine over 2 uh, times cosine x. So this is alpha, this is beta. This is alpha, this is beta. So it's sine of their sum, which is x over 2 plus x, which is 3x over 2, plus sine of their difference. Now the difference is x over 2 minus x, so it's minus x over 2, right? And since sine is an odd function, I have minus here. Okay, next. Beta is equal to 2x. Now, it would be plus sine of their uh, sum, which is x over 2 plus 2x, it's uh, 5x over 2 minus difference x over 2 minus 2x, it's minus 3x over 2. Now, I think you already see that this is plus, this is minus. Then this plus, next would be minus. So let me just go to the very last one. The last one would be uh, x over 2 plus nx. That would be sine of 2n plus 1 over 2x. And minus would be 2n minus 1 with a minus sign. Minus sine of 2n minus 1 over 2x. And what happens? Every second one is reduced with the previous. This reduced with this, this reduced with something else, and this reduced. And what's remaining is, from the first member I have this, and from the last member I have this. 
So it's sine of 2n plus 1 over 2x minus sine, sine, sine x over which is exactly this. So you see, I probably would not be able to, to guess that the way, the way to, to solve this problem might be just to multiply this by sine of x over 2, unless I, you know, I'm told that this is the way to do it. Yes, if I will do this, I will come up with the same solution, right? I multiply p uh, n's uh, by this, and I've got the difference between these, which is this, so that's the formula. And very similarly, I can do exactly the same with sum of signs. <coughs> let, me, let me do it now. Again, my final formula, which I have received, basically brute force method, using the brute, for brute force method of summarizing geometric progression, converging into complex format, etc., etc., um, so, my formula for Rn, which is the sum of sines, is cosine x over 2 minus cosine 2n plus 1 over 2x divided by 2 sine of x over 2. So, again, if I kind of know this, I can come up with an easier way to, um, to basically to, to this formula. How? Well, I will multiply um, Rn, which is sine x plus sine 2x plus etc. plus sine of nx. I can multiply it by sine of x over 2 to, to sine of r, r, x over 2. And what do I get? Now, let's think about it. It's sine times sine. How can I get sine times sine? Um, here it is, um, cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta, right? And cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So if I will subtract from this I will subtract this, my cosine will go out, and I will have 2 sine, by si sine times sine, right? So 2 sine times sine is a cosine of their difference plus, uh, no, minus cosine of their sum, right? All right, so 2 sine x times sine x over 2 cosine of their difference is cosine of x over 2, right? x minus x over 2 minus cosine of their sum, which is 3x over 2. Next, 2x. Their difference is 3x over 2 minus their sum, which is 5x cosine cosine 5x over 2, etc. The very last one, the nx, the difference is uh, cosine 2n minus 1 over 2x minus it, uh, sum 2n plus 1 over x. And what do we see? These are all reduced. And what's left? I have this one and this one, which is this minus this. <coughs> Same basically approach. Once I know this, I can um, come up with this trick. If I didn't know that there is a trick of such, such a thing, then probably I'm at loss. Well, um, so what helps in this particular case? Well, first of all, the more problems you solve, the more um, tricks you have in your repertoire, of course. So this is one of the things which you might actually remember. And next time you would think about, what if I will have a sum of uh, all odd, for instance, or all even uh, multipliers, factors. Maybe there is something which I can use, which looks like this trick. Maybe I can come up with some multiplier which would convert this into plus minus plus minus if everything would be reduced. 
But if not, then you can actually use the heavy artillery because you always know that these type uh, of uh, problems are very easily converted into some of geometric progression if you will use the Euler's formula. So that was my kind of um, purpose today to, on one hand, to, to show that a completely different theory um, seemingly unrelated to, uh, to the problem at hand, to summarize these uh, series. Um, and what I mean actually is a representation of the complex exponent in the trigonometric form, uh, the Euler's formula, can help you in, in, in this particular case, if you don't know some special tricks, etc. So the more theoretical background you have, uh, the wider are your options to, to resolve the problems. And sometimes, as I'm saying, if you cannot really come up with a trick like this one, well, use the heavy artillery, which is a, a, a theory, um, a theory of representation of complex numbers in trigonometric form in this particular case. It's always helpful to go outside of this box, wherever you are, like trigonometric box to go outside of the box and think about this from a different perspective. And that's how many problems actually have been solved. Uh, you have to go completely, you, you have to forget about all the ways how the problem was addressed before and go completely outside of the box. And in this case, the Euler formula is actually completely outside of the trigonometric box which you have here. Well, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.